my dear boys and girls this is uh, md rajul islam and today we wants to discuss about the structure of a scale heart air bladder and gills of roe fish from chapter 2.3 introduction uh, to animal so dear boys and girls let's start first of all it is about the structure of a scale of roe fish The skin of roe fish is covered by some bony plate-like structure called the scale, and uh, these scales are produced from the mesodermal embryonic germ layer. And the type of scale of roe fish it is cycloid type of scale, and uh, this cycloid type of scale which is also found in all crabs, salmons, and lung fishes. is a scale embedded in a small dermal pocket of the skin and overlap each other is cycloid scale is rather circular in outline and thicker in the center the center of the scale of roe fish is called focus or nucleus this is a important question for you what is focus and the answer is the center of the cycloid scale of roe fish is called focus there are some closely arranged line uh, around the center of the scale and these closely arranged lines are called circuli and in singular number it is called circulus look uh, this is uh, the look at the figure this is the scale this is the cycloid scale of roe fish it is uh, a circular uh, uh, circular at the outline and uh, thicker at the center some of the lines that means some of the lines that means the circuli that present around the focus this some of the lines are very distinctive and conspicuous this circuli some of the circuli are very distinctive for example this one this one and this one these uh, distinctive uh, circuli are called annulus a line of growth and this annulus line of growth can be used for determining the age and growth rate of the fish generally a fish and the scales grow more in autumn and summer the part of attachment of the scale is called anterior field this is the anterior field this, this is the attachment site and this is the free part this free part it is called posterior field and this is the lateral part it is called lateral field the anterior field of a scale this is the anterior field and this anterior field of a scale possesses few longitudinal grooves and these longitudinal grooves look at here this is the longitudinal grooves these longitudinal grooves are called radii this is uh, also a important question what is radii and the chemical composition of a scale that is the what are the chemical composition of scale the chemical composition of scale of roe fish it is chemically it is composed of lime and collagen fiber this is about the scale of roe fish then the next topic it is the structure of heart of roe fish the heart is the pump organ that generates the driving pressure for the circulation of blood and we all know that heart is the uh, main uh, pumping organ of roe fish the heart of roe fish enclosed in pericardial chamber just beneath the pharynx the heart walls is made of elastic membrane called the pericardium the heart of roe fish has two chambers like other fishes the two chambers are chamber 1 it is the atrium or auricle and chamber 2 it is the ventricle on the other hand there is a sub chamber also and this sub chamber it is called sinus venosus so then now we have to know about the features of atrium ventricle and sinus venosus so look what about the sinus venosus sinus venosus it is the most posterior triangular elastic thin walled chamber all the main veins opens into it the sinus venosus receives venous blood venous blood means deoxygenated blood through two large veins 
uh, namely the ductus cuviri and uh, a, a pair of hepatic sinuses posteriorly. Look at here, look at the figure. This is the heart of ruby fish. The heart of ruby fish is composed of a subchamber. This is called sinus venosus and two chamber. It is a uh, atrium and this is the ventricle. So next topic, it is the features of atrium. The sinus venosus, this is the sinus venosus, opens into, opens into a large, triangular, moderately muscular, thin wall chamber called atrium or auricle that lies in front of sinus venosus dorsally upon the ventricle. Then ventricle, this is the ventricle, this is a most prominent pear-shaped thick wall chamber. It is the ventricle. The ventricle is responsible for generation of blood pressure and propelling blood to the all parts of the body. The atrium opens into ventricle through a pore, through an opening, and the name of this opening it is atrioventricular orifice. So then now. It is about the structure of air bladder or swim bladder of ruby fish. A gas filled pneumatic sac. Air bladder it is a sac like structure and filled with gas lying dorsal to the digestive tract directly beneath the vertebral column and kidneys but outside of the psyllium of labio is called air bladder or swim bladder. The air bladder is originated from the dorsal of elementary canal. Air bladder receives blood from celiac mesenteric artery and emits into hepatic portal vein. That means uh, it's again a very important question for you. And this is air bladder receives blood from which one? Air bladder receives blood from celiac mesenteric artery and emits the blood into hepatic portal vein. Almost all the bony fishes possesses the swim bladder. In labio, swim bladder. There is an elongated white thin walled sac divided by transverse constriction into a small anterior chamber and a large posterior chamber which is interconnected with each other. Look at the figure. This is the ear bladder of ruby fish. It is composed of two chambers that are interconnected with each other. Between these two chambers, this is the anterior chamber and this is the posterior chamber anterior chamber it is small in size while the posterior chamber it is large in size and this figure shows the position of air bladder the position of air bladder just beneath the vertebral column at the upper part of the elementary canal but outside of the psyllium the swim bladder is connected to the roof of the esophagus by a cylinder duct called ductus pneumaticus look at here if this is the esophagus this air bladder is connected with this esophagus through a cylinder duct like structure and this cylinder duct like structure it is called ductus pneumaticus and ductus new the presence of ductus pneumaticus it plays a very important role in the classification of uh, fishes the outer surface of air bladder has an overlying capillary network the wall of air bladder of free fish it is composed of two layer this is the outer layer, this is the inner layer. The outer layer it is called tunica externa, while the inner layer it is called tunica interna. Tunica externa it is composed of connective uh, tissues, while the tunica interna it is composed of smooth muscle fibers. So look at here, uh, it is composed, wall is composed of two layers. The outer layer, it is connective tissue, is uh, tunica externa, and the inner layer of smooth muscle fiber, it is the tunica interna. In both chamber, in case of air bladder, the both chambers of air bladder inner wall have a red colored gas gland called retimira bile. The air bladder filled with gases secreted by the anterior red gland and uh, while the posterior red gland permits reabsorption of gases. The gases of air bladder contain several components. Scientists uh, Biot and Morian had proved that major portion of the air bladder's gas is oxygen with trace amount of nitrogen and carbon dioxide. So what are the components of 
gases of air bladder the gases of air bladder is composed of three main gas or three main components uh, it is number one the oxygen number two nitrogen and number three carbon dioxide the air bladder of ruy fish closely connected with the inner ear look at here if this is the air bladder this is the inner ear the air bladder is uh, connected with the inner ear through a series of small bones that is uh, through a series of small ossicles and the name of these small ossicles it is ovarian ossicle this is uh, another important question for you what is uh, ovarian ossicle dear boys and girls uh, what is ovarian ossicle the ear bladder of ruy fish is closely connected with the inner ear of ruy fish through a series of small bones and this series of small bones it is called ovarian ossicles the changeable pressure of air bladder gas passes to the inner ear through this connection and thus helps in maintenance of equilibrium this is the function of air bladder or ovarian ossicle then next uh, it is about the functions of air bladder air bladder in fish are associated with several functions for example air bladder acts as a hydrostatic hydrostatic organ the primary function of swim bladder of most of the fresh water fish is hydrostatic it regulates a specific gravity of the body by secretion or absorption of gas in the air bladder next function it helps in respiration how air bladder helps in respiration how in some fish the air bladder serve as a ex an ex accessory respiratory organ fish can utilize the store oxygen of air bladder during the deficiency of oxygen in the water the next function it is about the audition helps in audition low frequency vibrations of content gas induced by noises in water are transmitted by the ossicles to the inner ear thus fish can hear next function it is sound production some fish are able to produce sound with the gases inside ear bladder by the use of special muscles attached to the bladder then what are the significance taxonomic significance of ear bladder ear bladder plays significant roles in fish taxonomy on the basis of presence of presence or absence of ductus pneumaticus that is the cylinder duct which connects the ear bladder with the esophagus that is the ductus pneumaticus and on the basis of presence or absence of these ductus pneumaticus the teleost fish what is teleost fish what is teleost teleost it is a name of a infra class of taxonomy the teleost fish are classified into two groups number one it is physostomy they have physostomous ear bladder that is ductus pneumaticus present in between ear bladder and esophagus for example cyprinidae fish uh, especially it is labio cutla or in another word it is the carp fish the next physoclasty they have physoclastus ear bladder that is ductus pneumaticus is absent in adult stage in between ear bladder and the esophagus and example is most teleost fish uh, channa anabas channa it is koi fish uh, channa it is taki fish anabas it is koi fish so then now it is about the structure of gills this is a very important uh, question for you um, what about the structure of gills so boys and girls let's start it is about the structure of gills as an aquatic animal labio take dissolve oxygen from water gills are the main we all know that gills are the main respiratory organ of fish in case of labio four gills are present on either side of the pharynx uh, in a gill chamber that is the branchial chamber another name of gill chamber it is the branchial chamber thus there are four pairs in total of gills in ruy fish is gill chamber that is the branchial chamber it is covered externally by a skin of fluff and it is called the operculum the operculum is supported by bony plates the lateral wall of pharynx of ruy fish it bears five pairs of gill slits through which the pharynx communicates with the gill chamber the wall of pharynx between adjacent gill slits is called the branchial arch or gill arch 
wall of pharynx between adjacent gill slits is called the branchial arch or gill arch on each side of pharynx there are five gill arches each of the first four gill arches bears gills but the fifth arch bears no gill the reduced gill or pseudobranchia of hyoid arch that is the first pair of gills remain attached to the inner surface of the operculum like a honeycomb. The first pairs of gill arts, that is the hyoid arts, it bears a single row of gill filaments. Look at the figure, this is the gill chamber or branchial chamber. Inside the gill chamber or branchial chamber, the gills are present and the number of gills, it is 1, 2, 3 and 4. This side contains 4, another side contains 4. So, total 4 pairs of gills. And look at this whitish part. This is the gill arch. And this uh, gill arch, it contains the gill filament. Okay. And look at here. There are some teeth-like projections that present inside the gill arch. And th these teeth-like projections, it is called gill raker. Look at again. These are the these are the teeth like projections that present inside the gill arch it is called gill raker this is a single gill filament inside the gill filament this is the, uh, the uh, here it is afferent branchial artery and efferent branchial artery afferent branchial artery and efferent branchial artery they at last divide into many uh, capillaries this is the white the, this whitish part this is that whitish part this is the gill arch and inside the gill arch it is the gill raker so look, the inner or pharyngeal border of each gill arch has teeth-like processes. These are called gill raker. These structures don't permit food particles to enter the chamber, enter the gill chamber, and protect the gills from friction of solid substances. Each gill consists of two rows of slender gill filament. Each row of gill filaments is called hemibranch or demibranch which is internally attached to the branchial arch or interbranchial septum so that their distal ends that means the distal end of the gill filaments hang freely in the gill chamber and such type of gill is called filiform or pectinate types of gill every gill filament bears several minute transverse plate or lamellae and the lamellae it serves to increase the surface area of gaseous exchange greatly okay and this is all about the structure of a scale heart ear bladder and gills of ruby fish and after completing all the topics uh, some homework for you and the homeworks are number one it is draw the label diagram of a scale of ruby fish the next it is the label diagram of heart of ruby fish and last one it is the label diagram of air bladder of ruby fish so my dear boys and girls do complete this homework and uh, this is all about today be fine everybody